Jesus way. Oh, the Jesus way is the way of peace. Is the way of peace. Oh, the Jesus way. Oh, the Jesus way is the way of peace. Is the way of peace. Oh, the Jesus way is the way of peace. When He is King, all wars will cease. May His peace begin with me. Gonna beat my sword. Gonna beat my sword into a plow. Into a plow. Gonna beat my sword. Gonna beat my into a plow, gonna beat my sword into a plow. Christ is king in my life now. May his peace begin with me. And was there for 20 and a half years and retired. And then we spent 17 years in retirement up there in the mountains, living in our big old house right on the lake. And uh, finally, we decided that even though my wife and I were in excellent health, um, we had seen her parents wait too long before they had to go in to a care home. <clears throat> and it was not a happy thing. And so we decided that we're going to do, we're going to make our own decision on this. And while we're still in good health, we're going to move to a community where we will have time to make a whole new circle of friends, find a new church, family, and settle in. Um, because we saw that our, her, mother, her mother and dad weren't physically able to do that. Well, we found this place. Uh, we had looked at a number of others, too. We shopped around. But when we found this place, it was just it. And we, we moved in. I was 80 years old when we moved here. Wow. And uh, I'm going on 14 years being here now. Um, but this is wonderful. We just very happy here. Never, never regretted it for one minute. There's... That was Paul Wilson, a 94-year-old resident and volunteer at Cross Keys Village. Cross Keys Village is one of 22 homes in the Fellowship of Brethren Homes that cater to senior living. It is located in New Oxford, Pennsylvania. This is Brent Carlson. Welcome to Brethren Voices. Today's program features a couple who went into Brethren Volunteer Services in their retirement, but it also focuses on life at Cross Keys Village. Ed and Sharon Graf, welcome to Brethren Voices. Thank, Thank you. Thanks so much for having us. <laughs> Thank welcome. you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. It's delightful to have you here. So let's talk about Brethren Volunteer Service. Sharon, this is your first time in Brethren Volunteer Services. What made you go into Brethren Volunteer Service, or what, what interested you about being a volunteer? Well, there were a number of factors in making our decision to enter, uh, to enter Brethren Volunteer Services at this time in our life. And uh, one of the most important factors was that my parents lived in um, central Pennsylvania, and my mother's health was declining and um, we thought that by going into Brethren Volunteer Services we could not only do a project where we would serve other people but we would be uh, available to be closer to where my my parents were living and um, as we made our as we made our choices and decisions way um, Cross Keys was a, a project that was available that was in the vicinity and in the vicinity of where my parents were living. How far away? About an hour. Oh, okay. And so we felt like that was a good fit for us. Ed, you had been in BBS in a much younger time. Uh, what was it like to go back into BBS? Yeah, another, another lifetime ago, uh, uh, actually in the 60s. Wow. Uh, 1967. Um, I'm, I'm a conscientious objector and uh, I had just prepared uh, and registered with uh, uh, Selective Brother service. and Volunteer Service and mm -hmm. also, you know, of course, uh, the Selective Service System at that time. And um, uh, I, w I was permitted to uh, graduate from college and upon graduation uh, went into Brother and Volunteer Service, which fulfilled uh, the al alternative service requirements as a conscientious objector. 
it's my understanding that at any one time there's about 80 volunteer service serving in BVS, and they have over 100 projects to select from and over 23 countries to serve in. So that, that's quite an array of programs that are current in BVS. So how, how far ahead did you plan to make this move? Oh, we probably started uh, back in June of last year. Judy, uh, it was a, a quite an involved process. The just the the um, process that BVS requires you to do for their benefit was a, a relatively lengthy process, and just um, trying to get everything in place at, when you have a house that you're going to be leaving for. Uh, well, we left it for ten months. Um, so that process of just getting all the things done in order to be able to be gone for that length of time took took a lot of process to do, and uh, there were a lot of people that helped to make that all come about. Once you're on site, BBS provides lodging and food and transportation and a small stipend of about a hundred hundred fifty dollars a month. Um, it, was that adequate? Did, did you find all those arrangements suited your needs? Yeah, we, we were well taken care of. Uh, we had we had a, a two-bedroom two cottage on, uh, on the grounds there at uh, Cross Keys Village. Our meals were provided for. We actually didn't have to do any cooking. Oh. Um, uh, at Cross Keys, there, there are three different places where we could get meals and um, we were well taken care of. I and mean, you actually didn't need to drive anywhere to go to work. I mean, you walked to work. Yeah, we wor walked to work, yeah, yeah. Did you know what you were going to be doing before you got there? Well, that's, that's one of the things that's, um, they, they take into account the, the abilities of the volunteers and what you're wishing to do. Mm -hmm. They have a, a long list of uh, volunteer options, and uh, I think we were given probably, I don't know, six or seven different things that we could do uh, in, in our time there. So uh, they, they allow us to, to make choices uh, as to what we would do. And of course, we'd look at what the needs are. Yeah. Uh, so. Good, Sharon. What did you What did you ended up selecting as as your service activities? Well, I don't know that I selected one specific thing. There were uh, I kind of left it open to being where I needed to be, in where the most need was, and um, one of the things that kind of differed, I think, a little bit in what Ed's experience was and mine were is that. I was trained in a lot of different areas so that if, so if there was a need that I could be put into that spot. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I don't think that I necessarily chose one specific place to, to work in all the time. It was a variety of whatever needed to be done type of thing. What, what would be your normal work day? Well, it would generally start about 8.30, um, and, and it, I don't know that I had a normal work day. It was because uh, it varied a lot depending on what, what needed to happen that particular day, but it could be uh, starting my morning out by taking residents down to uh, therapy appointments, whether it was occupational or physical therapy appointments or speech appointments, and they were residents who were... Um, in wheelchairs, and so you had to transport them to their to their um, appointments, and that um, was as well it, it, that as well as taking them to uh, beauty shop appointments or whatever their needs might be that you might be transporting them to a specific area. So Cross Keys Village had an on-site therapy program, and they had an on-site beauty shop. Right. Yeah, they offer they offer a pretty good selection of uh, services for the residents. From yeah, from going to getting their you know hair done to having their having physical therapy or occupational therapy or speech services, or just sometimes um, they might want to go down to the gift shop and you would transport mm -hmm. them down to the gift shop. Basically, Cross Keys Village is is a village. It's made up of single family homes, up apartments. Uh, cottages, 
and uh, then they have about 250 people in nursing care. So you've got, you've got three times as many people living out in the village uh, in various uh, you know, types of uh, living situations. With a thousand people living there, uh, how many people work there? Well, there's probably uh, around 700 uh, uh, full-time and part-time employees at, at Cross Keys. Oh, were there other volunteers? On their list, there's like uh, around a thousand volunteers. A thousand volunteers doing all types of oh. uh, all types of things. You you were not the only BVS volunteers there. There were some other BVS volunteers as well. Well, there was we, there was one other person there as a volunteer, and that's Mark Pickens, and he came um, a year ago, I think August and has decided to continue on. He's asked for an extension of his time, and so he's going to be there another year. Oh. But um, he was the only other Brethren Volunteer Service worker there. While you were there, you did some special programs focusing on people and what they do at Cross Keys and the different programs. Could you tell us a little bit about that? And I think you have some of those uh, videos to show us. Actually, yeah. It, uh... I, I didn't realize that they had uh, a, an actual TV studio at Cross Keys Village before I went there. They actually put on a, a daily program, Monday through Friday, called In Touch. And it's basically, basically a, a program that they provide information, interviews, uh, entertainment, inspiration to, to the residents at Cross Keys Village. So this uh, is a live? A live TV. In, yeah, live uh, TV. I've never done live TV before. So. And it's kind of closed circuit, closed circuit. So it's in yeah. for the, all the residents yeah. of, of all thousand people yeah. can watch this. Yeah, and and I basically did, did some video work, uh, prob probably uh, a dozen or so little s segments, and we, we call them close-ups at Cross Keys. And there are uh, several ladies who have dedicated their time to bringing in um, their, their dogs and their therapy dogs. And they dress them up depending on what the um, holiday might be. You might find them in uh, St. Patrick's Day clothing or Valentine type clothing. And These they, are the dogs. The dogs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And they come and they uh, visit the residents and uh, they've been doing this I think for some time and so the residents look forward to this event and the dogs look forward to it too. They've been to I've been told that the dogs know which residents they like to go to and visit and um, so I guess it's a mutual, mutual respect for each other that they enjoy their time together, the dogs and the residents. <laughs> Nuke knows. You have pretty eyes. He does. He does, doesn't he? Oh, <laughs> it just gets to you, yes. Yeah. And you're all dressed up? Yeah. They always dress up to see Miss Alice. Yes. Yeah. But, but there are some that become special. You develop a relationship that's almost like they're part of your family. We really enjoy doing what we do because we know um, we can walk into a room where someone's sitting very sad and they see the dogs and they smile. And the smile begins to uh, develop into um, their wanting to talk and, uh, and just raising their spirits in general so that when we leave the room, um, they're feeling better than when they were when we came in. But there's another amazing program called the STAMP program that you were involved in. It's, it's something that they've been able to raise thousands of dollars. So one of the many volunteers in the program. I'm a retired school teacher here from New Oxford. I live in the borough of New Oxford. I'm not a resident. As far as the program itself, it began in 1981. It was designed for activity purposes for the residents to become involved in active manual dexterity, 
uh, as well as brain function and being, uh, being uh, active in those areas. Uh, we take all of the stamps that we can possibly get, and we get them from all over the world. Is we process the stamps and pack them, and then we resell them to um, stamp dealers in New York, actually a subsidiary of Mystic Stamp Company. It's called Ben Art. And uh, we ship probably four or five times a year. And each pack that we use is, looks like this, that's all the larger it is, that contains a hundred stamps of the same, exact same design. You and mentioned the In Touch live TV program every morning, and there was a, there was a special lady named Grace, who was the host of that program on Wednesdays, I believe, for 18 years. Yeah, Grace, Grace Pinter uh, was, a, was an amazing person. Uh, she's just recently passed away, and um, she, uh, I think, was a host for, I think, 18 years. Every Wednesday, she would host the program, and, but she also did games for the program, and, and that's one of the things that they do to have interaction with people out watching, watching the program in their homes. Uh, they'll do various games. And uh, so a lot of trivia games. And these are uh, live trivia games, so you can call in. You yeah, call you call in, in, in your you answers. call in. That's right. I forgot that part. But uh, she, she was just a tremendous, tremendous lady. Uh, she once worked for, for uh, Melton Hershey, uh, the founder of uh, Hershey Chocolate. Uh, she did so much in, in her volunteer efforts at Cross Keys Village. And one of the things that I thought was fascinating, because I actually got to see the program live once, was that she was she created these games and she created the questions all on her own. As far as Grace and her contributions, they've got a whole closet full of, of uh, the, the scripts. Uh, well, they may be playing, even though she's and, passed away. And they still away, use them, yeah. I was gonna say, they're gonna be playing them, those games for yeah, quite a while. Yeah. The In Touch program runs Monday through Fridays, but a place like Cross Keys Village really runs 24-7 because oh. you've got people to take care of and, and it's a 24-hour operation. Mm -hmm. So as volunteers, do you get days off and, and what did you do for, on your days off? Well, we generally had the weekends off. Occasionally we were asked to help with a, an activity that might fall on a weekend, but normally we had the weekends off. And so... Um, with my father living an hour away, usually we took one of those days to go and spend the day with him doing whatever. Sometimes we would take him different places or just spend, spending time with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've gone, we, were, we have been able to take other trips. We've gone to New York several times and seen some plays while we were there, which was, now, much, which was very fun. New York's a long ways away for us in Portland, Oregon. How far was it <clears throat> from New Oxford, Pennsylvania? Um, uh, took us a couple of hours. Is that right? Just a couple. Just a couple hours. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You could do it in a. We've done did it in a day. Gone in, in a day, and then come back, come back the same day. And we were able to go to Washington D.C., which is even closer to go to than New York. And um, got to take some tours of the uh, the Capitol and um, other sites around Washington D.C. And then we've also been to Philadelphia, went to Philadelphia once or twice. And um, so we were able to take in some, some of the sites that were around the area, which was lots of fun to do. And being uh, volunteers in, in Brother Volunteer Service, you know, when you go and serve uh, wherever, you, you always have the uh, opportunity to, you know, expand your own horizons and, uh, so, so for me, one of the one of the really neat things was going down to Washington D.C., and we went to Ford Theater mm. for a couple times uh, to see productions that were put on there. At Ford Theater, you know, where where uh, Lincoln, was, Lincoln shot. was shot, and it's still and, functioning uh, as a theater. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, memorable days for me was on the first snowfall. They actually went out with buckets and brought snow into the Woodbury area and the Wo Woodbury neighborhood, I should say. 
and uh, allowed residents to make snow persons. During some of the snowstorms, uh, some of the workers w would actually sleep overnight mm. in order to be at work the next day. Uh, incredible. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad they could do that because if it gets really bad, you can't get there. You yeah, know? right, right. Yeah. So it didn't it didn't seem to shut things down at all. Um, and 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 uh, being a retirement community, um, they have to go on regardless of whether, whether there's a, a foot of snow out just falling over the night. Um, they, they've got an, an incredible crew that, that uh, removes snow from everybody's property. Mm -hmm. uh, the sidewalks, the driveways, the streets, they have to do, uh, be prepared to do that and deal with that so that uh, otherwise it becomes uh, a, a safety issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they have a, an incredible crack crew to take care of the snow. I'm curious what it was like to be working and volunteering in a place where many people your age have gone to retire. Did you have any thoughts about like, wow, these people are actually living here permanently and we're just visitors? Um, did you think about that or what it would be like to retire there and actually live there uh, you know on an ongoing basis well we, we've we've talked about that quite a, quite mm -hmm. a bit mm -hmm. uh, uh, the people there are so fortunate uh, to be in such a, a wonderful positive community uh, it's it's incredible it's it, it, uh, that's all I can say it's just an incredible place uh, uh, where they've got all kind of activities going on. Uh, people can decide what they want to do or not do. Uh, Cross Keys Village has a beautiful swimming pool. Just incredible. Well, tell us about the pool because there's something special about that pool. Yeah, the, the schools became involved in that effort. I'm not, I don't know the whole story behind that. But, uh, there but the, are a you're talking about schools. the public schools yeah. in the community outside of Cross Keys. They did not have swimming pools in, in their their uh, educational facilities and, and uh, found out about uh, the possibility of using the pool at Cross Keys Village or, or the, uh, being able to uh, send their students to Cross Keys. And so there was an arrangement made so that that actually happens. And that's part of the reason why they have a swimming pool there because uh, of the need uh, in the community for a swimming pool. And they have a full complement of athletic equipment for training and exercising and fitness too? Right, they do. They have a very nice um, area where you can go in and use all the different machines. They have a variety of different machines that you can use and they have people there that will help you to use those machines, train you on how they, how they work properly and they also have offer Personal, if you wanted to have a personal trainer, you could have a personal trainer work wow. with you. So they're real into fitness for the, for the residents. And uh, I think that's one of the misconceptions uh, we have maybe about retirement centers. There used to be years ago, you always thought a retirement center was a place where you people went, old people went and they just 
sort of vegetated and, and wasn't a lot a lot there to um, in, to, to uh, keep them active and that's not the case with Cross Keys and I'm sure a lot of other places as well. They offer a huge variety of activities to um, not only physically but mentally keep people alert and and able to enjoy their their life longer and in better health. Uh, so there's a, a real focus to uh, support people uh, in in their uh, apartment living, in their living in the cottages, and and uh, living in their family homes that are located right on on the campus. You know, we didn't really talk about this, but th this fellowship of brethren homes, for the most part, offers a continuity of service from people who are fully independent to people who need skilled nursing care. Right. And. The benefit of that is that you, when you move there, you don't have to move again if you really get sick or unable to take care of yourself. Right. And, and I heard that that's really important because a lot of people get really lonely when they have to move to a place they've never been before. And in this case, they get to stay where they are. So for a place like uh, Cross Keys, you know, once you are accepted there, uh, you're, you're, you're guaranteed that, that you'll have a place to live until you do die. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so th that's one of the beauties of, of uh, uh, the br Brethren uh, Retirement Home. It sounds like we all need to know a little <laughs> bit more about the, the 22 <laughs> homes around the country. Unfortunately, not, there aren't too many here in Oregon, so yeah. most of them are on the East Coast. So. Um, so anyway, that's uh, maybe something that we need to work on. Yeah. Well, Ed and Sharon Groff, thank you so much for being with us on Brethren Voices. Well, th thanks so much for having us. Yes. Thank, thank you. Gang, thank you. It's a, it's a wonderful story that needs to be told. It does. It so. is. It is. For Brethren Voices, this is Brent Carlson. Sharon Groff. And Ed Groff. Wishing, wishing you, you peace. peace. All those who tread, all those who tread, the path he trod, the path he trod, all those who tread, all those who tread, the path he trod, the path he trod, all those who tread, the path he trod, shall be called the friends of God. May his peace begin with me. Oh, the Jesus way, is the way of peace. Oh, the Jesus way, is the way of peace. Oh, the Jesus way is the way of peace. When he is king, all wars will cease. May his peace begin with